Just before Christmas, I got invited to fish the wonderful Caffili Castle with a friend of ours, Luke. Now that trip couldn't have gone any better. It really was one of those red letter sessions where everything falls into place perfectly. However, fishing aside, it was during my brief visit to this historic venue that I also got to spend a bit of time with two lovely guys, Owen and Ron. Both of whom were passionate anglers who have helped run the angling club for many years. Now they both gave me a great potted insight into the club's history and how important it was to the local community, which was great to hear. However, all good things come to an end and sadly my time at the castle was up. But as I closed the gates to head home, I had an idea. I thought it'd be a nice gesture to donate for free some young carp to the club as a thank you. Mark loved the idea too, and it's something at Baitworks we've often done in the past. But the practicalities of selecting just a handful of carp to take down to the castle became far more painful than we'd first imagined. Right, we're here, mate. Uh, it's a little bit windy, so I'm hoping you're not going to pick it up on the mic. Yeah. But, as we've already suggested, the fun starts now because trying to catch these stock pond carp, you wouldn't mm. believe are far trickier than I imagined. Yeah, it's not easy. Especially it's been so cold. You've got loads of cold water that comes in because there's a little inlet pipe. So, uh, sometimes they're all set off the bottom. So, I'm going to try try on the bottom where I usually feed them. If they're there, you get a bite. But if not, I'll have to go over to a little two-foot zig. Oh, interesting, mate. This yeah. is tactical changes in a stock pond. <laughs> I know, it's bad, isn't it? <laughs> but, mate, obviously, as we said, we usually drain them down, big net, nice yep. and easy. Do it all in one go. Yeah. And now we're trying to catch individual carp. Yeah. So, hang on, before I let you drop that in, shall I say, yeah. got to have a look at the tactics a minute. Oh, Let's have a little look. What have we got? What have we got? What have we got? We've got a little bit of tubing. Oh, tiny. Oh, it's in, the, it's in the shade a minute. So, there we go. Tiny little lead. Crikey, mate, what's that? A size 22? Size 8. Size 8 with a little cremino bottom bait. Yeah, come on. In. As you can see, the problem that we've got is that uh, obviously there's a predator netting across the whole stock pond. So we've got one little gap here where Mark's just lowering the rod in in the hope that you know they're in this little bit of water. So we're very much restricted to trying to catch one from a tiny, almost feels like Eskimo fishing into an ice hole. But um, yeah, we're not. We're dropping a rod just down into there. There we go. Now me and Mark have had a rod in the stock pond, trying to catch them on rod and line, exactly where Mark feeds them every other day. Now, of course, it's winter, it's cold, and they just don't want to be there. And in fact, we can see them all over the other side of the stock pond in the last bit of the sun, and unfortunately we can't get anywhere near them with a rod. So we've got one day left, we've got tomorrow before we go to the castle on Thursday and we need to invoke plan B. Unfortunately, plan B is a far bigger job, but we'll save that one till tomorrow. Well, it's day two, and with day two is a new plan, and that is uh, to drain the stock pond down. Now, I've started this last night, so I was here pretty much all day, all in the afternoon, all last night up until 10 o'clock, starting to drain down, so we've got to reduce it by 10 foot, and the problem is there's loads of water coming the other way from the land drain, so uh, as quick as I'm taking out, it's coming back in, so not easy. But anyway, we're getting there, and the process then will be to get in with our chest waders and literally chase the carp around and try and net out five fish. It's going to be loads of mud, it's going to be sticky, loads of clay. It rained about 20 minutes ago, so it's not ideal. But I think if we can get the water level down another foot or so, we'll be able to get in there and uh, pick about four or five carp out. So that's the plan. And um, fingers crossed the heavens don't open because it'll become a mud bath and we can uh, pick a few fish for the castle. Removing the water was a slow process. Plus trying to net them 
with even a few feet of water in the pond is a total waste of time. If anyone's ever done this before, you'll know they're masters of avoiding the net. It was a simple case of being patient until enough water was removed. Well, with the water level down now, we can see the backs and it becomes a whole lot easier. But we've got our water rushing on the far side, so we can't be too long, but you can see them all look. Look at them all. Let's have a little look. Easy pickings now. There they are. But the light isn't on our side. No. And we need to be at the castle tomorrow by eight o'clock. And uh, <laughs> that's, that's just enough time to pick some fish, have a shower, eat, <laughs> load some kit, and then get back on the road. That's it. Take a look. There's one. Nice got. Now these carp had already been graded just a few months prior, so we knew the number of fish that needed removing. However, it was wet, cold and a muddy job, but it was a simple case of picking them out by hand until each one was accounted for. Then we had to decide which ones would be heading to a new home the following day. Well, we're here at Philly Castle and the fish are just about to go in. So we're going to get them all weighed, uh, ID'd, and then the plan is have a, probably a nice little group shot. And uh, then I get to fish as well. So uh, yeah, added bonus. So looking forward to that. But first of all, let's get these fish sorted and um, yeah, get fishing. We picked a lovely selection of carp. We picked some scaly ones, a few plain ones, and a real unique one that Ron christened the sergeant due to three big scales on one flank. Now each carp got carefully weighed, photographed each side and briefly admired before they disappeared into their new home. The angling club is in great hands, so with a bit of luck, these carp in just a few years time might just become the next kings of the castle. Right. Great stuff. Good luck, buddy. <sighs> oh, wrong way. There you oh. go. Cheers, guys. He's yeah, off. Fun, Thanks, Rob. Thank you very much. No, pleasure. Thank you very much. It was now time to get fishing and the kit sorted for the night. The last session I did on the castle in December was crazy. The action was relentless. I just got the take on tape as well. So the mission for this trip was to see if Mark could get a carp and that castle backdrop shot in the album. But first, we had to navigate the urban jungle at rush hour. Quick! 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 Let's come in. <laughs> Yes. Green. Quick, shut the gate. Well, that's official sorted. Lovely to see them going. And uh, we've just come round to an area where we're going to fish for tonight. And what's more, I've just seen a fish. Just seen one come straight out of the water. So I've bags did the area. 
uh, and Mike's going to go down a little further to um, where there's fish coming in out of the, the bay. Yeah, keen to get some rods out. So I think I'm going to get three, three, get yeah, two rods out because there's two rods on here. So I'm going to get two rods out on zigs and then see what happens for an hour because uh, they're it's definitely here and they're really close. Yeah, exciting. What is going on here? There's been a change in tea. <laughs> this is very unusual, Mark. No, no, mate. Oh, green tea. What's yeah. happened to the Earl Grey? Huh? What's happened to the Earl Grey? No, I've got some Earl Grey, but every now and again, it's nice to have a bit of green tea. You don't need milk right, for okay. that. So, uh, yeah, very, very good for you as well. Full of antioxidants, the old green tea. Mate, so. your lack of milk requirements is all down to you not bringing any food. Fish, oh, hang on. Fish. Sorry. I could certainly tell that Bryant was a little rusty. He'd not been fishing since before Christmas. His tackle was all over the place. Well, an added bonus of coming to uh, drop the fish in was that we were allowed to do a night and fish. So I've hastily got all my rods together now and looking at what Mike caught and Luke before Christmas, I just, oh, there's some lovely, lovely fish in here. So, to have a chance of getting one in the album against that backdrop, um, yeah, was something I couldn't resist really. So I'm getting the rod sorted now. It's gonna rain literally the next hour or so. It's gonna absolutely tip down. It's due in for most of the day. So I'm keen to get these rods in position. I've had a little look round and I can see the, it's very, very shallow. So it's all like four or five foot tops probably. Um, but there's lots of clear areas, then there's patches of weed but it's all very very low lying so I flicked about with a marker uh, well just a bare lead and it's skipping back off it so it's nothing to worry about it doesn't come up like two foot or three foot it's all sort of very very low lying so for me that screams the chod rig so I'm going to deposit some of these out there um, now just a couple of things to pick up on there's a lead core ban on here um, also a barbless hook rule so this is going to be a naked chod rig um, love using the naked chod, especially in this situation. I've got a nice size four hook on there, nice and sharp, so I'm going to squeeze the barb down in a second. And to that, I'm going to attach one of our new revamped Sent From Hell pop-ups. Um, I've redone the whole pop-up mixes throughout the whole range to combat, really, you know, in this day and age where everyone's using very, very heavy rig components, be it Ronnie rigs, you know, bigger hooks. Um, we just need that pop-up that's just a little more buoyant. So I've revamped the whole range and these pop-ups now will comfortably hold up. That's what, a size four. We've got a, a ring swivel on there, a little bait screw. Um, that'll hold all that up all night and all the next day if it needs to. So um, yeah, I'm gonna attach one of these on like this. So I'm gonna have our hells. And again, it's a nice, a nice yellow color. Being a sort of club lake and that, you'd see that this sort of place would see lots and lots of sweet corn. But literally very, very simple. That just gets screwed in like that and that'll keep it nice and nice and secure. And that is it, that is ready to go. And hopefully, this is gonna catch me a carp. So the rain's gonna come in, the clouds are looming, uh, but if I get anything, then we'll bring it to you. But um, yeah, fingers crossed between all of us, we can hopefully um, catch a carp or two. The day was passing quickly, as it does that time of year. However, I got sidetracked trying to film the kingfishers, but we were soon adding a few kilos of bait to the spots. The mix was pretty consistent between us, with plenty of crush boily, edge pellets, liquids and a small handful of maggots. Despite the cool water temperature, the carp in the castle certainly enjoyed a bit of grub. All the time, it's better. I thought that was to go in. Bang in. But just like last trip, the light started to fade and the action kicked off in style. I've got the tash this time, Bert. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Good minute, isn't it? Yeah. I'm keeping my same weight. 
No, and I reckon that's nearer 30 pound that one. You reckon? It's up there, it's, 20, it's high 20s, I reckon. Yeah. Where's Mark then? I'm a nap, is he? I don't know, I don't think so. He's shrunk a little bit. Nice fish though, mate. Yes, Luke. Oh, that's a good one. Well, I think I've just landed uh, the wood carving. I'm not 100% sure, but it's definitely one of the better fish in here. Real black, scaly thing, so um, happy days, just get it out. Mate, how, how is your luck, mate? Literally, you've just cast the rod out. Twice. I'm buzzing. Mate, the start. light is fading fast. If we're going to try and get a little bit of video footage of this and a couple of pictures, we need to act pretty yeah. quickly, mate, because I, uh, I haven't got a flash light with me or a, no. or a light, so. Let's get it done. Let's oh, get it yes. done. Right, so between the three of us, we've seen a few shows, and um, yeah, this is the first one to go, and it's the wood carving. At, well, we reckon it's about 30, 33 pound. Probably not the best time to catch it with the light fading so fast. So we're just gonna get a quick video, weigh it up, and uh, get it back. But it's a target for me that I wanted this year. And I'm absolutely buzzing. So hopefully, the other boys can have some, and uh, we'll be happy days then. Look at that fish, Luke. <laughs> Oh, yes. Well, that one looks a really big common, and the bobbin just slowly crept up out the clip, and that is the result. And that looks a very wide fish. But I'm just going to wait for this rain to ease off, <clears throat> and hopefully, we we'll get a bit of video footage of him. But look at that, it's a hell of a fish. Fantastic. But typically, Exactly like last time, it's, uh, it's raining and there's no let up, I don't think. Lovely, lovely indeed. Right. £30.6. £30.6? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What a great result. Yeah, man. I wasn't expecting that. Well done, Michael. Oh, God. Well done, yes. Michael. Whee. That's a lovely fish. Look at him. Oh, yes. That's a nice thank you present from Caffili Castle. Well, good morning. And it's 10 to 7. Still very much dark, as you can see, I've got the head torch on, kettle's on. First thing, obviously, every car bangler does when they get up. Sort of got to wake up with a nice cup of coffee, aren't you? That is, uh, that's the best moment of the day. So while the kettle gently does this thing, give you a bit of an update. It's been a crazy 45 minutes. Uh, I haven't got a single rod left in the water at the minute, nor has Luke. We've had, uh, we've had four bites in quick succession in about 20 minutes. And I can look down the bank and I think Mark's had one as well because I saw his head torch on. So uh, yeah, what a great start to the day. We've got a few hours here at the castle. Once it gets light, we can't hang around much longer. Obviously the main purpose was to come and bring the fish. Uh, but while we were here, we were kindly given a night's nice angling. And uh, once again, it couldn't have gone any better. So uh, what a fantastic evening it's been. We had some lovely food, but unfortunately it lashed down with rain, so we were bivy bound and we just sat tight for uh, for about three or four hours before we decided to get in the bag and uh, have a fairly early night. But yeah, as soon as it gets light, we have this cup of coffee and we get the fish out and show you what we've got. Well, it's time to do Mark's carp and he's got my coat on. He's forgot some change of clothes. Got wet last night, didn't you? Very yeah, wet. look at that. It suits you, mate. <laughs> oh, mate. So damp and cold last night. It rained for like 10 hours yesterday. You even had my hot water bottle, didn't you? Well, I had to. Yeah. I had to. Emergency. Only thing you haven't got in mind, which is uh, a little retro number. Look at these ski techs. Yeah. Look at that. Mate, Tim Paisley on the mangrove would be proud of you. Classics. Classic late 90s carp addition to any carpy attire, isn't it? They should make an all-in-one suit out of that material. <laughs> what? A, a ski tech suit? A ski tech suit. I'll buy it. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, mate. How's your hands? Are they cold? Yeah. A little bit. Anyway, you got a carp to lift up. Got a carp, mate. With so a lovely who, backdrop. Who cares? 
Well, that will do. Oh dear me. Feels like I'm a bit off the pace uh, from Mike and Luke. They, uh, they had a few last night, but luckily I had a few fish come up, bang on sort of when they said they, they would come between 12 and four. Managed two takes, lost one unfortunately, but this one's made me a very happy, damp, wet angler. <laughs> oh dear, my hands are cold, it's freezing, but I don't care. Lovely. Go on, bud. Well, it's so cold this morning. I felt sorry for Mark picking up that fish a minute ago. You could see his hands were like bright red, almost blue. I know Mark really suffers with the cold, um, but it's nearly time to wrap it up. I'm gonna have some, uh, some healthy breakfast, sort of fuel the tank a little bit, have a couple of cups of coffee. Just leave these rods out till about 10, 11 o'clock. Um, maybe lunchtime at a push and then it's time to go. But uh, yeah, it is winter carp fishing at its best. Have a look, I'll spin this round and you'll see just how muddy it is. Mark freaks out completely because I don't ever have a ground sheet. Um, but yeah, we had some rain last night, that was for sure. Let's get that kettle on. The bites just kept coming that morning. The more bait we put out, the more takes we got. It was crazy winter fishing once again, but sadly time was running out. However, I did end that trip on a really nice common. Well, there we go. That's the last fish I think of the castle session. It's been a great trip. Seeing those fish go into their new home and me, Mark and Luke all catching a lovely castle carp. It wasn't gonna be a full blog. It was just gonna be a nice trip to give something back. And that is a great ending to a lovely 12 or 14 hours fishing at the castle. It was at this point that we got to reflect on all the carp Baitworks had donated to fisheries for free in the past by raising money through slideshow events over the years. The Cotswold Carp events were the brainchild of Mark many years ago and they've raised enough money to pay for over 140 carp that we've donated for free to clubs and open access fisheries. Now lots of these fish are now over £30 and some of them have even managed to break through the £40 barrier. Helping to secure the future of clubs with new fish stocks is something we're both passionate about and will continue to raise funds through more events in the future. However, I couldn't end the vlog without a big thank you to Ron, who saw my last vlog that had a hole in my sock, only this time he came to the rescue. Mate, what's it? Because what? it's going to rain. This is this is sounding this is sounding uh, and suspicious. It let me down on the last video, so there's something there for you. And, and if Mark needs them, I definitely know Luke does. There's something for you. Oh, mate, that's <laughs> Ron, that's very <laughs> kind. You have to do that. Not sir. You have to do that. Mate, thanks very much. This is um, got to open it, Mike. Got Feels like Christmas it. all again, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, come on, Mike. <laughs> you know I needed some socks, Ron. Oh Look at that. yeah. 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 You had all of these socks last time. Mate, I feel like Christmas. There's going to be some pants coming on the next yeah. trip. And a handkerchief. <laughs> oh, Mate, brilliant, it. brilliant. Well, I, uh, I do actually need some new socks because the ones I've got on now, I've got a hold of them. So, yeah, hey, it's going to... Nice I'm to see you, Ron. On my own side. Lovely. No worries, mate. Thanks, Ron. A big thank you once again to Caffili Castle. And as we've already mentioned, we really hope that the cart that we donated will one day go on to be the kings of the castle. Go. Good, really.